Hello and welcome to the NFL Preview Show powered by Odds Checker. Ben McClymont, Tom Julian and joined by Coach Ryan Bold. Jeff, tough, tough weekend for you. How are you doing? Well, you know what, Tommy, it's, it's always tough when you lose in the playoffs because it's the, fi- you know, it's the finality of, you know, the, the fact that, you know, no two teams ever stay together. Uh, you know, next year will be a new team. There'll be new players. Uh, you know, there's always changes in coaching staff and all that. So when you end a season and, and end it on a bitter note like we did, and we, we got pounded and did not play very well, it's tough. It really makes you sit back and, and uh, take stock a little bit. Just, you know, we've got to improve. We've got to get better. We've got to improve our coaching. We've got to improve our playing. We've got to improve every aspect. But that's, that's life in football. If there's one team that goes away, you know, and, and again, whether it's the Canadian Football League or the National Football League, there's one champion and only one team ends the season feeling good about itself. Yeah, and I guess, Jeff, this is the side of, of football that, that fans like me and Ben, we don't really see, right? So, so now you come into your office and you're, you're clearing it out. And, and some of these players that you've got so tight with over the last six, eight months, you, you, you might not see them again, at least not in a professional capacity for a long, long time. It's a, it's a real lifestyle being in a football team and being a football coach. Yeah, you know what, Tom, that's really interesting you hit on that because today at 10 o'clock this morning, our team get together for the last time and, and they'll go through their exit interviews and they have to out-process through the medical people and strength and conditioning people, the equipment people, turn back the iPads. And then, you know, they'll get together and, and it'll be the last time they'll see each other, some of them for six or seven months. And for some, it'll be the last time they ever see each other. And, and it really is an in- interesting phenomenon because you go to training camp and you become a football team and then you go through the, for us, an 18 week season. So it's been, it's been 24 weeks of football mm. and but it, it, you get really close to these guys because you see them develop players, they develop as men and, you know, it's really tough. And, and you know, especially for me, because I, I, when I was, I got into this business, they told me don't fall in love with the players. Well, I've never been able to, you know, I've never been able to do that. I, I, I respect these kids so much. Mm-hmm. The stuff that they have to do, the, the work that they put in, how dangerous this game is. If you're a professional football player, you're a pretty special dude, and, and uh, you know, I'll miss that. Yeah, well, it's bad news, Ben, for the BC Lions, but it's good news for NFL Talk UK, Odds Checker, and UK fans in general, because, Jeff, you'll be winging your way over to the UK uh, as early as next week, and hopefully you'll be, you'll be sitting here with us yeah. in Odds Checker Studios. That'd be good. Well, I cannot wait to see the palatial offices of Tom Bloomfield. <laughs> you know, Odds Checker International, I think is what it's called now, isn't it? It very much is. He's got our producer, Tom Bloomfield, got a massive corner office, overlooks, uh, overlooks the whole of London, essentially. The whole of the UK. So it's, uh, it's very nice. But uh, Jeff, Ben, let's get into week 10. Let's talk a little bit about it. And there were some crazy results, right? There were. One big result was the uh, Titans blowing out the Patriots. Did anybody see that coming? Absolutely not. But you look around, Jeff, and you've got the Browns who beat the Falcons. Uh, the Rams get back on track against the Seahawks. Cowboys beat the Eagles. Uh, the, um, the Saints dropped a massive bomb on the Bengals. Just unbelievable. 51 points. 51 points. 51 and, and the Bengals could still be in the playoffs. Like, it's say, not like they're beating also round. The, play, the Bengals are in the playoff picture. The Cincinnati Bengals go into yeah, that game five and three. That. that cost Terrell Austin his job. That that game, you know, they fired the defensive coordinator right after the game. That fifty-one points in the National Football League, and I know the Saints are both and they got Drew Brees and all that, but fifty-one points at home is really really tough. Yeah, I, you've, it's like you've read my notes, Jeff. I've got that next point, Terrell Austin. And then, but it's not just him, right? You're looking at Todd Bowles. The, the Biff, Buffalo Bills beat, beat the Jets 41-10. So Todd Bowles is looking over his shoulder. Um, big win for Jason Garrett, who, who was feeling the pressure a little bit in Dallas. You know, this is the time, and, and you can certainly speak to this, where, where coaches are really feeling it because this is the kind of make it or break it line, right? This is where the playoff teams make a surge and the not playoff teams fall apart well it, it is and this is the, the pressure part of the season and, and you know you, whether you're talking about scott linehan you're talking about a lot of guys assistant coaches hmm. 
it didn't used to be that you fired assistant coaches during the season, but you've seen a whole different NFL where if one side of the ball isn't performing well, they'll fire coordinators right in the middle of the season. You saw Hugh Jackson got hired in the middle of the season. Cincinnati brought him in as a special assistant to the head coach, whatever that is. It's a really interesting phenomenon. There are a number of assistant coaches right now that are looking over their shoulder. If your unit's not performing well, they are not slow to make a change. They fired Joe Marciano, who's one of the best special teams coaches in the NFL historically. He's with Tony Dungy in Tampa Bay. He was with the Texans. He goes to Detroit to work for Matt Patricia and gets fired halfway through the season. It's a tough business for him. It's funny you mention that, actually, Jeff, because Ben's looking for a new job, special assistant to the special teams coordinator. I'll take it, Jeff. I'm not going to lie. BC Lions, you think we can swing that one? I'm very good at picking up balls and throwing them where they need to go. I know a pub in London where we can have a – I think we can get him on the board and we can have a real – Hour long, hours and hours of job interviews. Absolutely. God, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get worse and worse with every pint that's that's uh, consumed on that one. I no, better, better. Well, hook and laterals all over the place. That's my flavour. <laughs> um, Jeff, considering all of these surprising results, we've got a couple of changes in the odds for uh, Super Bowl winners. So the Rams are now seven to two, uh, Saints nine to two, Chiefs eleven to two, and Patriots uh, drifting a little bit at thirteen to two. Apart from those big four, Jeff, are there any other teams that you would see as a uh, obvious, uh, not an obvious, but maybe an outsider for a, for a Super Bowl berth? Well, I think the Vikings are a team that can. And, you know, I think this, their game this weekend against the Bears is really, really critical. They're going to go to Soldier Field, and they have a chance to beat the Bears at home and then they'll have another chance with them in Minnesota. So I think that I, I really think that that team has the capability of being a Super Bowl team. They can get hot. They've got enough weapons on offense. They have an outstanding defense at every level. Uh, they're good at kicking game. But again, Tommy, there's there's so much that's going to play. I think the more important thing than right now for, for these teams is how they position themselves going into the playoffs because. For example, the Patriots. Patriots took a little bit of when they lost the C because it's the game, but they want home field advantage for the playoffs. It's very, very difficult to beat the Patriots in Gillette Stadium, and they know that. Mm. So if they go on the boat in the playoffs, it's much, much tougher. Yeah, so the Vikings are only one game behind the Bears. What we're saying is if they win, they level up with the Bears, and the Packers, if they win, they'd be one game behind as well. So that North is well open. Looking in the East, Patriots 7-3, the Chargers are 7-2, they're currently second in the division, but they're getting closed in on, aren't they, by quite a few teams now. Do you think the Texans, if they keep winning, that home field advantage might go? Yeah, Texans six six game winning streak, so they're, they're outsiders at 30-1. to one. The Vikings, like you mentioned there, Jeff, 20-1, to one, and the Chargers, Ben, 13-1. to one. one team we haven't mentioned is the Pittsburgh Steelers, who obviously put a beat down on the Carolina Panthers uh, in Week 10. They now face the, the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, and I mean, the Jags stink. They, their season's gone from, from worse to worse. So the Pittsburgh Steelers have to exact some revenge on the Jags this week, and then we have to be talking about the Steelers as well. Yeah, I think, again, the Steelers are a team, uh, Tommy, that, that can beat you because they can score points with anybody. Yeah. And, you know, James Conner's been such a huge thing to get for him at, at running back, and nobody anticipated he would have the year he had. And statistically, you compare him to Le'Veon Bell, and he's probably you know done some things that Le'Veon Bell hasn't. Uh, Antonio Brown is playing at a high level. Juju Schuster, Big Ben, uh, again, they're a very good football team on offense, and they're growing on defense. They've started to play the way the Steelers you would anticipate the Steelers play on defense. I think it might come away from the defense a little bit. They're aggressive up front. Got all those high draft picks in the front seven. And they're starting to play. They really can get after the pass for, and their back is much, much better than it's been. So, again, the Steelers are a team that's going to be in that con- conversation too. Yeah, they're ten to one to win the Super Bowl. Ben, you see any chance for the uh, for the Steelers? Yep, I definitely think there is a chance for the Steelers. They're really on the up. The offense is on the up as well, and that's what everyone was worried about earlier on in the season as well, because that's supposed to be 
but the cornerstone is the offence. It scores points with so many weapons, and they, they struggled for a few weeks, but they're back on now, dropped 52 on the Panthers. And the Panthers are a potential playoff team. I think they'll get there. If you're beating a playoff team by about 52 points to 21, is it 21? Yeah. That's a big win. Yeah, well, that's why the Saints are so scary as well, because they yes. did the same to the Beng- Bengals, didn't they? It's Panthers so... are better than the Bengals, though, aren't they? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You know what about the Saints, Tommy? If you guys, we can talk about the Saints a little bit. I think, you know, obviously they hang 51 on Cincinnati, and, and uh, you know, they go out and get Doug Bryant, and he tears an Achilles tendon before he ever steps on the field. He hurts himself in practice. Uh, you know, and, and now you look at him and you say, oh, are they good enough on defense? But they just seem to be good enough and get enough stops on defense. And that offense is always, you know, playing from ahead. So the defense can doesn't have to worry about the, the run game, particularly because they're ahead enough that, that people have to throw the ball to try and keep pace with them. And, you know, they, they make enough plays. Now, again, when you get to the playoffs and you're playing against the better teams, the key thing to me is, you know, will will the Saints defense be able to hold up in playoff football? I think signing Brandon Marshall brings them another weapon on offense. But right now, to me, whether you know you talk about Davenport, the young pass rusher, or Anceloni, they got some players. But you know, again, front to back, are they good enough? Yeah, it's an interesting one, that isn't it? Because all of the front runners have incredible offense. So you've got the Saints, the Chiefs and the Rams. Out of those three, Jeff, I guess you've got to pick the Rams with the, with the best defence out of those three. But are we seeing a bit of a shift maybe from where the last few Super Bowls have all about defence wins championships to maybe now your offence, if you're so freely scoring, maybe it's now a time for offence winning championships? Well, I, I think there's a lot to be said for that. You know, um, they, they, everybody uses that old cliche that if you win championships with defence, and certainly you've got to play defence, but last time I checked, yeah, you got to score more points than the opponent to win. So whether that means scoring 13 or scoring, you know, 53, you got to score points. Yeah. Now, here's what I think is is really interesting when you look at those teams. The Chiefs, what do they do well on defense? They can rush the passer, and they're a little bit opportunistic. They're going to get you some turnovers. You look at the Rams; they're much the same because I think Seattle has shown where if you're going to way to beat the Rams, the formula to beat the Rams is to run the ball. Mm. You know, they, Seattle has played them extremely tough both times and really ran the ball well in both games. That has always been Wade's Achilles heel a little bit. If, you're, if a team can hang in there and run the football, keep the offense, keep the Ram offense off the field, not get in bad down distance situations so Aaron Donald and those pass rushers can tee off, then I think you got a chance to beat them, but you're going to have to you're going to have to run the football. You're not going to get in a scoring contest. The only team I think that can get in a scoring contest for them would be the Chiefs. Mm. Well, it's, it's, well, I mean, we'll see the rounds of the Chiefs this week. Yeah, right? I think the the uh, the playoff pitch will be decided by number one, the weather, and who gets the bye weeks. If you if you can get like the Saints, if they get number one, number two seed, especially number one seed, and they play at home in the dome. That's so big for them, isn't it? Well, see, they've got a gun on the road. Starts snowing in Foxborough in the AFC as well. There's so much to be decided just on who who gets that number one, number two seed. Mm. You're exactly right, Tommy, and, and, and uh, or excuse me, Benny. But here's the thing: the teams we've talked about. The Patriots are really tough to beat in Gillette, right? The Steelers are tough at home. You know, the Panthers are tough at home, but that's not a place where you go, "Oh my God, we got to go to Carolina to play." The Saints are, they are a handful when you get in that dome. It is so loud in there. Minnesota, Minnesota very much the same. The one team that we talk about as a potential Super Bowl team in the Chargers is the only team, the Chargers and the Rams really, are the only two where you say, gosh, you don't want to go to LA and play, uh, you know, against those. I think I think the, the seedings in the playoffs are going to be really, really important. The Chiefs and Arrowhead, that is a tough, I mean, weather and noise and the crowd and all of it 
in January football in Arrowhead, it's tough to beat the Chiefs at home. It's hard to pick, Jeff, where we're going to have our where we're going to have our road trip, our NFL preview show road trip. Uh, once we take this thing out, whether we go to New Orleans, whether we go to Kansas City, it's it's going to be a tough choice. Once uh, once we're bankrolled, uh, that'll be very very nice. I want <laughs> I want to get your pick, Jeff, early on. We've still got uh, six six or so weeks left. Uh, the MVP race. Is there an instant standout candidate to you? Well, I think, you know, that it's at this time, and, and let's be honest, it's going to be a quarterback that will win the MVP. I think that there are a number of guys who are non-quarterbacks that you could talk about for it. But certainly, to me, the number one name that comes out right now is Drew Brees. And what he's been able to do in New Orleans is just phenomenal. I mean, it, at his age, to be able to play at that high level, there are a number of, you know, quarterbacks now in their late 30s and, and even early 40s that are playing at a high level. But Drew Brees, to me, has had the best season in the National League right now. Yes, yeah, so we're looking at the odds, and Drew Brees and Patrick Mahomes are the favourites. Mahomes is 5-4, to four, Brees is 5-2. to two. Jared Goff's at 22-1, to one. big outside. You look at his stats, 3,134 yards, Brees 2,601, but Goff has got a bye week to come. 22 touchdowns against 21. The Goff's, Goff's numbers and the way he's performed are right up there, but <clears throat> excuse me, no one seems to be valuing as high as those other two quarterbacks. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think Breeze has kind of caught the imagination of the media, and that's a big part of this whole thing. Yeah. Goff, Goff certainly has played outstanding football, and, and Mahomes, how can you argue with a guy that's done what no quarterback in the history of the game has done? I mean, he, he, the, kid, the kid is a 300-yard throwing machine, mm. but but I just really think that Brees, you know, for a lot of reasons, sentiment being one of them, because he's at the, you know, at the apex of his career, probably, uh, you know, playing playing at a high level much later in his career than most people thought he would. Yeah, I like that. I like that five to two. I think that's a nice pick. You've seen um, uh, Tom Brady's drifted a little bit down to thirty three to one uh, with their loss against Tennessee, which would be an interesting one. And Aaron Rodgers out at twenty eight to one. Uh, he's, I mean. The, the, the storyline is kind of written for Rodgers, though. He's done it before, the, the relaxed thing, the, the running the table. If Rodgers manages to drive Green Bay up into the playoffs and, and they, have a, they have a Super Bowl-type season, then the script is written for Aaron Rodgers to come in and win MVP. Super Bowl MVP, maybe. But I can't see him stealing the MVP away. I think... Like Jeff was saying, Breeze and Mahomes are too far ahead on what they've done this season already. Yeah, I'm just buying into that storyline yeah, that, that, nice that story. Jeff, Jeff said there. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm gonna tell you something, guys. I really, I really would like to see them change the name of that award and make it the most outstanding player, as we do in the CFL. Because when you talk about most valuable player, mm. then to me, Aaron Rodgers has got to be the number one guy, or Tom Brady's the number one guy, because you look at what's around them and what. I mean, I mean, Aaron Rodgers has, for I don't know how many years, really probably since the last Packers Super Bowl has elevated the play of everybody around him. He's playing with some guys that, I mean, imagine what he could do if you put him behind the offensive line that the Chiefs have and get all the weapons that the Chiefs have yeah. and in that Andy Reid system. I mean, his numbers would be, you know, like Madden numbers. And, yeah. and I think the same thing's true, you know, when you look at uh, what, what uh, Drew Brees has around him. I, I just really think so much has been asked of Aaron Rodgers, and probably in an unfair, you know, in an unfair way, he's had to elevate that team every season that he's been the quarterback. Yeah, I, I couldn't couldn't agree more with you, Jeff. As always, I mean, I, I, even if I did disagree with you, I'd just throw my opinion out and, and <laughs> just take yours because it's so much better than mine. And you always put it so eloquently, which which uh, we do not do, which we can't do. So uh, that's why we love speaking to you, Jeff, and that's why it makes it more exciting that you're going to be here next week with us. We're looking forward to that, um, but we do need to let you go. Um, we're looking forward to week eleven games, Ben. They're going to be going to be some exciting ones. So you some and I juicy gonna, ones. Yeah, Chiefs absolutely. at the Rams. Is that which. Quickly, Jeff, your favorite game is, is it Chiefs Rams in Mexico City? I think that is going to be a great game, but I think the game that I want to watch is the tradition of the Vikings and Bears. Go on, on the Bears. Shores of Lake Michigan. The weather's going to be bad. It's going to be old football. I really think that's going to be a big, big game, and I cannot wait to watch the Vikings and the Bears on Sunday night. Absolutely. We're looking forward to that one too. Jeff, thank you so much for your time um, and we'll see you next week. 
I'll see you next week in your in your city. <laughs> Absolutely. Bye, Bye, Jeff. Cheers, Jeff. Bye. All right, fellas. Thank you to Coach Reinbold. Always a pleasure to speak with Jeff. Ben, I, he just he just gets it, doesn't he? He's got knowledge. It oozes out of him knowledge. We, we get into the we get into the nitty gritty. We we can unearth some gold, and it's always nice to look forward as well. Yep. And it's week eleven. Well, that's what we're going to do right hey, now. We do that again. That was weird. Yeah, yeah. that was weird, wasn't it? Yeah, mate. I, I, I think calling him Coach Reinbold has thrown me. Anyway, thank you to Jeff Reinbold. Always to. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you start that? Thank you to Jeff Reinbold. Always good to get into the action with Jeff. Um, a little bit of chat on, on week 10. But now we're looking forward to week 11, Ben. Yep. And as we always say, some big games. And there is big games. We're getting to the, the nitty gritty now. Very much so. It's one of those where week 11, I think, has just thrown up some really interesting fixtures. It's going to be tight. It's going to be... I, I feel like there's going to be some good defensive matchups. Yep. We've seen some absolute barn burners, but there might be a few close, close encounters. And... and this really is a, a, a time where you're fighting for your life. Teams like the Detroit yeah. Lions, if they have any chance, they have to win. Yeah, this losing, game. you're out. You're out yeah. of the playoffs with no, no other choice. There's a fair few of them. And that's why we've picked our favourite five games from Week 11, Ben. And we're going to do a five in five. So each game gets one minute. We're going to throw a load of different odds at you. A little few statistics in there yeah. as well. Uh, but yeah, it's just a little sample size. See what you like. Take it out. And have a bet on it. Okay, are you ready to go, Ben? I am ready. Good. I like it when you're ready, because uh, sometimes you're not, and it's Oh, that's not fair. Uh, all right, let's go to our first game, then. It is the Carolina Panthers at the Detroit Lions, 6 p.m. Sunday. Ben, what do you like? I like the Panthers. They are heavy favourites, actually. 6 to 11 on the road at the Detroit Lions, who are 17 to 10. Panthers got absolutely whooped last week, but I've got them coming off that with a victory. They, they really need to regain their position in the race. So we're going to take Panthers 1 to 13 points and the winning points margin 7 to 5. Do you like that? I do like that. Yeah, 52 21 round by the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. last week, which is Didn't even show up. frankly embarrassing. Um, but I just think they've got more than the Lions, which is maybe disrespecting the Lions, but the Lions are on a three game losing streak. They're not in. Uh, not in any sort of form. I quite like the uh, under 51.5 points in this. That's a 10 to 11. Um, and I also fancy a little turnaround. I think the Lions might keep it close. So Lions winning at half time, Panthers at full time, 6 to 1. Well, you're be not sure. I'm more likely to go for the Panthers 12 and a, 12 points on the winning points margin at 13 to 5. That's 12 points plus. So any more than 12 points. Wow. I could see them get whooped. Oh, really? That's interesting. I thought we were on the same. Same line, but no, you're, you're thinking an out and out Panthers win. I think the second half is going to be just big. Wow, okay, we shall see. We've gone over <laughs> quite, quite. Uh, well, that was just a little chat, yeah, there. yeah, fair enough. All right, let's move on to our second game in this five and five the Houston Texans at the Washington Redskins, another 6 pm fixture. Ben Texans are favorites again on the road, four to six, playing the Washington Redskins at 13 to 10. This could be a bit of a toss up. You just don't know what you're going to get from the Redskins sometimes. They do have a lot of O line problems though, and they need Adrian Peterson to go well. So if the O line's struggling, I'm not so sure it's going to take the Texans. 1 to 6 points, winning points, Martins at 10 to 3. 7 to 12 points, because he's winning by a touchdown, that's at 9 to 2. I've got the Texans minus 4 at 11 to 8. I think, uh, I think Damaris Thomas is a nice little addition. Uh, Deshaun Watson coming into a bit of form as well. I, I just can't see past the Texans, even though they they are on the road. The Redskins offensive line has been terrible. It's, it's broken, as you say. Yeah. Um, so when usually when the offensive line is beaten up, Peterson gets absolutely crushed. Yeah. So I, I can't see him making a massive, massive influence in this one. Over 43.5 points in this one is even. I fancy that. I've got an overtime 18 to 1. I think this might go to overtime. Wow. Yeah. Good, good way to finish that. It is. Do you? You think it's got overtime? Well, I think it's got overtime written all over it. Nice. Overtime it. No, it's terrible. No, it's <laughs> all right, it let's move on to the third game in our five in five. The Philadelphia Eagles at the New Orleans Saints. 9.25, Sunday night. Let's go. Who's going to win it? The Saints are going to win. Yeah. Which you can't, the Eagles are Super Bowl, the defending champions, have made a nice little acquisition in the off-season, well, not in the off-season, mid-season. 
getting Golden Tate. I think that will make a big difference. But they're three to one on the road. The Saints are one to four, but that's because the Saints are destroying people. Yeah, so the Saints picked up Des Bryant. Two days later, Des Bryant tears his Achilles, which is unfortunate. They brought in Brandon Marshall instead, but they just don't need him, do they, Ben? No, the, really. the Saints are a, a three-man offense, and it's absolutely destroying teams. So I've got over 55.5 points in this one, 19 to 20, and over 33 points just for the Saints is 21 to 20. Yeah, I like the Eagles scoring points as well. I've got the Eagles over 23 points at 10 to 11 because I think they could hang with them. If you really think they could hang with them, you get the Eagles plus nine at 10 to 11. If they go down by maybe a touchdown, three points, that could that could match up. Do you want, do you want a little half-time, full-time this one? Go on, give it to me. Eagles half-time, Saints full-time, seven to one. I'm not sure the Eagles can quite do that, but Eagles could stay close. It could be close. That's, that's going to be a fascinating game. That's a lovely 9.25 game. Yeah, I'm that really, is a nice one. We'll be very surprised. I'll tell you what, this is a nice little late night Sunday game as well. Take it. Go on, oh, lead it then. It's the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. Sunday night football, 120, I think. Um, what do you think, Tom? Ah, this is, it feels weird you're, you're doing it this way. It's like Andy um, Deck, the other way around. Vikings are actually underdogs in this one, so five to four, um, which I am shocked about because to me, the Vikings are a complete team. I said this earlier, I love what, what they're doing. Zimmer's, Zimmer's in a, in a Super Bowl window, it's a very exciting time. So I'm going to back the Vikings. Uh, plus 2.5 handicap. That is even, so I like it. Yeah, the Bears are three to four at home, Vikings five to four on the road. Vikings winning points margin, one to 13, is a 15 to eight. I quite like that. I think the Vikings could sneak it. I don't think it's going to be a big win either, either way. If you think the Bears are going to sneak it, uh, you can get Bears one to 13 points, winning points margin, six to four. I kind of like points in this game as well. Do you like points? Yes. Points, Vikings over 21 and a half at 10 to 11. I've got You've over, got to take that. I've got over 48.5 total points, and that's at 13 to 10. Do you want an interesting stat? Oh, yes, please. Both of these teams, their last fixture was against the Lions. Oh. Because <laughs> the Vikings are coming off a bye as well. So that obviously adds into there. I've got a turnaround because I think it's going to be close. Bears half-time, Vikings full-time, 15 to 2. Yeah, 15 seconds over. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. I can't help it then, I get too excited. All right, the last game, and this is a barn burner. You hate it when I say barn burner. I, I, I love it. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Los Angeles Rams, Tuesday morning, 1.15 a.m., Mexico City. Oh my goodness, under the lights. Ben, who do you love in this one? I like the Rams, and I think that's maybe controversial. The Rams are at home in this game, which I'm not sure what that means when it's in Mexico, but Rams <laughs> want to 13 points, winning points margin, six to four. Uh, Rams points as well. Should we go for some Rams points? Go for it. Oh, I don't have the odds for Rams points. Let's go over over points anyway. 60.5 is at 4 to 6. But I, I think it could be a little sneaky low scoring game. Under 60 and a half at 15 to 13. No, it's like not. That. It's ridiculous. I actually, <laughs> I actually quite like the Chiefs in this one. I think it's going to be fun. Chiefs over 32.5 points is 11 to 10. Uh, as Ben says, the line is 60.5. That's the biggest NFL points line in 30 years. Which is oh, what a fact. Um, so Chiefs are 2.5 uh, point underdogs. Uh, if you fancy that, that's a 10 to 11. I quite like it. Yeah, maybe Chiefs at halftime, Rams at full time. If you like my pick of the Rams to win, you get that at 17 to 2. You can also get that on the, on the reverse. Rams, Chiefs is also 17 to 2. Okay, nice. So, <laughs> You're not very good at this one minute thing, are you? No, I've, I've, I've lost it. There's so much to talk about this week and so many exciting games. I think that it was very hard to cram it into a minute. It was, but we tried. We, we tried. mainly failed, but 5 in 5. Dirty. Yeah, yeah, a little cushion. A little 10%. You remember Doesn't quite a, ring as well. 10%. You know, when you're at uni and you get a word count and you get over or under oh, 10%. Yeah. That's what we've given ourselves yeah. this week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Next week will be tight again. Absolutely. If you like those odds, make sure you go to oddschecker.com for all the best odds. You can check out ours and, uh, and check out others. Good luck. Well, that's it. Five in five. Another week done. And Ben, week 10 was, was another profitable one for us. More touchdowns for us. £572 up we are now. So if you put £20 on each one of our mini preview bets, so we throw three bets out for each of the big games, which week four games often, sometimes five as a Wembley game, you would be £572 up, which we don't think is too shabby. Yeah, so make sure you're following Odds Checker on Twitter. That's where our mini previews come out. So you can, you can be in the know with the best bets from us. Uh, and make sure you go to oddschecker.com as well for a full list of all the odds, everything that's going on, NFL and sports-wise. We will be back 
next week for week 12. We'll be previewing all of the action. But until then, good luck with all your bets.